I hate it when balloons pop. You're watching me unflinchingly. I can feel your stare burning into me and suddenly I think you think you know me intrinsically, intimately, completely, but you don't. And you need to know that I refuse to become a balloon that you can pop. Something you don't know is that one of my favourite things to see that never fails to make me happy, that fills me with an unspoken thrill, is a daffodil. Bursting through the snow in bright gold and yellow, its head aglow as if encircled by a perfect halo. Colours. Colours mean a lot to me, and I've discovered a light green to be one that has a special hold on me. I spent four drunken hours of New Year's Eve clutching a glowing green balloon to me, which I think we can all agree is a little bit crazy, but it made intoxicated me happy. You were once a deep, rich purple, your aura stretching out and enveloping every circle, no matter who, what, when, or where the people came from, your royalty was almost palpable, your life story could have been read by Jesus as a parable, and boy, oh boy, were you beautiful. But that was back when your balloon was still malleable. See, back then, you were essentially invincible, gliding through life without society's polluted air blowing you up and causing you strife. Back then, you were a purple that was vibrant, but now purple turned to mauve. You lie pricked and deflated, your pieces mere remnants of a soul that was once brilliant. It's been said that a lie will have got into a boat and rowed to a new continent while the truth is still putting on its shoes. You were misled. Your confidence, once content, was given false reason to dread. Magazines, billboards and talk shows filled your head with needles of abuse, made you question your use and your truth and everything you once knew as fact as to why you were you. The air pumped in, began to define you whilst finding new ways to ridicule and humiliate you from inside you. And age added to the inflation, which added to the degradation, which added to the fragility of this new creation that was now just a distant relation to the soul I once knew, which added to the alienation of me and you. But you grew and grew and grew as babies do. Sometimes I think of children as balloons. They start so small and wrinkly, seemingly without an inkling about, well, anything, but then slowly... Quickly, they grow as a balloon does with each blow. They expand, learn, and understand the constant ebb and flow of the globe into which they were sown. And before you know it, they are fully grown. The life-giving air given with care by every well-meaning, thoughtful parent out there wishing to share their past loves, laughs, and cries becomes the ultimate sacrifice. As with each blow, we begin to grow, but they lose the precious airs that were once theirs. Maybe this seesaw cycle is the only way to keep the vivacious colours recycled. Perhaps the only way to procrastinate the inevitable colour combustion is to procreate. And maybe the media isn't to blame, but our parents whom we imitate, the ones who smooth and mould us into something often quite different from our original shape, the perfect person they could not be, but now want to live through vicariously. I was once malleable, my destiny unchangeable, my thoughts and plans were permanent and lethal, and at just five years old, I was regal. But more than that, my soul was peaceful. My dreams were big, bright, and colourful, and anything I wanted to do was possible. I was young, free, and happy, and it's not as though I remember the exact breath that changed me or who it was who first told me I had to act more like a lady, but there was a gradual fade to my vivacious personality until eventually, suddenly, I had lost most of my vitality. The bright light green of my balloon turned sickly with every sordid expectation pumped into me until finally, on New Year's Eve, I saw the old me and I pounced, reclaimed her with all of my might and gained back my futuristic sight and every fibre of my being was willing to fight. Fight for myself, fight for the little girl with the big dreams still living inside me and fight against the constraints of our oh-so-limited society and regain back my inner peace and unique personality. And now, no matter who tries to prick 
or stab me, I will still be small and wrinkly but defiant, having discarded the blown-up fragility of a life based on the thoughts of society and now no one and nothing can pop me. Besides, I hate it when balloons pop.